Morning guys, Chris here with Indy Farm Life. Uh, it's a beautiful last day in March with snow on the ground. Could use a little something warmer. Anyway, today I'm going to be walking you guys through an install on my John Deere 4105 adding a rear hydraulic outlet. So basically what's going to give me is one in one out to power at least one cylinder from the rear of the tractor. Currently I have zero. Uh, the kit number from John Deere is LVB26030. Now, not only does this fit the John Deere 4105, it will also fit the previous models, uh, the 3320, 3520, and 3720. Now, this is not going to be a standard hydraulic uh, lever controlled. It's going to be uh, electric over hydraulic, so I'm going to tap into the fuse box. Decided to go ahead and tackle this myself after I ordered it from John Deere. I got it from our local dealer, I think for about $1,200, uh, saved on the shipping by not having it sent to me. But the John Deere dealer to install it wanted almost seven or eight hundred dollars to install it. So figured I'd give it a whirl. It can't be too tough. And hopefully they'll give you guys some tips, walk you through it, and uh, we'll get through it together. Step number one, always make sure to disconnect the battery, especially since we're going to be working around the fuse box. I currently have the battery tender on mine as well. Doing a little pre-prep work here. So my fuse box is right there. I'm going to have to get to the back of that. So I think I've removed one bolt on the other side. I'm going to remove that one there. Change of plans, actually. I'm actually going to remove those two bolts there. Attach the parking lever and that main bolt going through to that housing. So I can just separate it enough to pull that metal cover away. We'll have to undo the linkage. So we'll see how it pans out here. Careful when removing those bolts. The back side has an actual nut on it versus like a welded in nut too so give you guys a little better picture after I got that housing off there so that was the bolt right here from the outside that one right there that holds the parking brake assembly so now you can see I can get to the bolts there holding that fuse box in place because we've got to put another wire behind that here shortly all right so step number one Remove the seat. Two bolts in the front and two bolts in the back. All right, so there's the opening for the two bolts that were in the back. So after reading the directions about getting the seat off and what we're gonna do, I'm gonna try to leave the seat there without taking it all the way off because it's pretty heavy. So we'll see, may end up removing it later. All right, so per the directions, the next thing we're gonna do is prepare this valve. Basically, it's just putting some fittings in. So in this section here, we're gonna have a 90 degree. It's gonna end up coming off like that. Hmm, it's weird when you're looking in the camera, it's all backwards. And then on the back side of it, we're gonna have another fitting, same elbow, and it's gonna end up pointing straight down. So we'll remove these blanks, looks like a, a hex end. So we'll remove those, get these oriented to how they're supposed to be, and it says make sure to keep them loose. So just a slight update. I highly recommend scratching the paint off of that before you try taking them off. And I highly recommend an impact driver because me putting an Allen wrench in there and laying on the Allen wrench to get it off didn't work. Also, it's an eight millimeter hex. All right. Oh, uh, hell, little I got two and a half hours. I'm good. <laughs> Sorry for that interruption. A little bit of an update. All right, so here are the valves placed inside there. The one oriented back to two unions, top and bottom, and then the back side for your second hydraulic hose. Also note, these two are fully tightened already. Mentions keep these somewhat loose, I'm guessing to adjust for the hydraulic hoses. All right, updated. Now the housing is in the bracket. Just two bolts here and here, backside. And I used a 13 millimeter. All right, next step, got the dust ring on there. The actual hydraulic coupler is now it's gonna get screwed on to both of those. All right, so the next step, will be to loosen that fitting there, which I kind of had already done. Like you see all the hydraulic, hydraulic oil everywhere. 
So loosen that fitting, and then also loose that fitting, and then this black hydraulic line is what we're going to replace. Um, kind of see right now, it's just basically feeding back into the reservoir. So we're going to connect to that one to run a line up to the mount I'm going to put on here in a minute with the actual hydraulic ports, and then that one will do the same. Note when you're loosening that one, it was a little finicky to get off there. You had to kind of put a little pressure on that stainless uh, hydraulic line there to get that loosened enough to get that off there. Okay, so the old hydraulic steel line is gone. Came off of that elbow there, and that's straight fitting. So the directions say to put a 90 degree elbow fitting there, but I've already got one, so I'm not going to replace that. I'm going to keep it there. I'm going to replace this straight fitting with a new one as it has a screen filter inside of it. Another little update, that straight union that I was going to remove, well, I put as much pressure as I could on it and couldn't get loose, so I decided to check and there's already a screen in that too. So I'm also not replacing that. Alright, so the shorter fitting, or shorter hydraulic steel hose uh, goes there onto the straight union, works up and is oriented like so. Uh, so I wasn't going to put that sleeve on there, and then my buddy here told me it's probably there so it doesn't make a god-awful noise as you're driving, so I did decide to put it on there. Good luck with that. That's right up there with trying to get the hex nuts out of the hydraulic valve. See the orientation of the longer hydraulic steel line. Oh, is it using a big right there to, the, to hold on to there? Is that... Made it right there to the 90. Oh, sorry. Coming up and oriented up like so. All right, so lines are attached. Got the housing body here. So, just a tip. Uh, if you have an extra person with you, had someone basically kind of lining this up up here while these were still loose. And what I'd recommend is before you get this going, you drop your wrench first. Uh, tighten these up right here a little bit, um, just so you get your get it lined up. So these should be the first things that you tighten down. Leave those pretty loose so they have a little bit of movement to them. Get those where they need to be. So hand tighten these. So then you can figure out where to move your bracket up, down. The angle of your bracket. Yeah, how you want it angled so that it all lines up okay. After that, tighten those up. Tighten those. Both of these are tightened all the way down. Go tighten finger tight to actual tight pretty These down here. Too. Yeah, these fittings. Uh, after they were finger tight, they only took maybe a quarter to half turn of the wrench before mm -hmm. they were tightened down. So then tighten this up after that. And lastly, we'll tighten the lock nuts there on the side of the ROPS. All right, so everything's hooked up. Uh, gonna go ahead and put the seat back on to figure out how we're gonna exactly mount the control box or the fuse box. All right, so the next step, we're gonna take this top electrical function one marked A, it's gonna go into the top, right there, and then the one marked B is gonna go into the same port there on the bottom. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is get the old handle off, just two screws to get the new one put in for the switch, so I can get that routed down to connect into the harness, and then just a matter of Kind of tucking all those wires somewhere so they're out of the way. Also two screws at the top. And if you're lucky, like me, yours will also be stripped out. So just an inside shot there of the handle before I attach the back side of it. See how that wire is kind of routed around the top? There's a little kind of holder there for it. All right, so there's the fuse. <coughs> Load center, they call it. Let's get that strapped up here somewhere in a minute. Probably just zip tie it somewhere. Those are for the fourth, fifth, sixth function. So I'm not going to be using those, so this will just get tied up somewhere along this ROPS as well. So I'm going to crawl underneath the tractor here, basically get this routed down underneath to hook up to the joystick, which I just installed, the new one, zip tie that core down along the, the joystick handle. <clears throat> we'll get it connected down there, get the 
routed for the button. It's there on the 4105, is right next to the joystick handle, or where it mounts, it goes into the base of the tractor. Then we'll get everything routed to go up front to get into the fuse box and under the uh, ground for the negative battery terminal. So I was hoping not to have to do this, but I'm gonna have to take that cover off just to get that switch in. There's not enough room to get my hands in there to get that harness up there to plug it in. So just a bolt there and another one right there. Right, so you can kind of see a underside view here on the 4105. Zip tie city. They just give you so much of that harness on the back side, and then the front doesn't have hardly enough to get to where you need to go. But that's where I routed it up to go to the fuse box. Next step, I'm gonna loosen the fuse box to get behind it to insert the new wire to insert a new fuse. So there's one bolt there and one bolt there. All right, so next I'm gonna remove the two fuses there in the second row. I'm not sure if it really matters which side you do it on, but that's what the instructions say, so I'm gonna do it. So remove the two fuses, pop out this orange, uh, like lock, pop that out, and then go from there. Just to clarify something that I thought was a little unclear in the directions, this side and this side have locks. You're only removing this side on the right right here the left side can stay in the other thing i thought was a little confusing is where you're actually putting this back here uh, so you can see that double red wire with the black tape on it is the one i just put in uh, so if you count the blocks from the right it is one two three fourth one over third row down I thought it was a little confusing because there's already another wire going to the other side of where that fuse is going to be put. Alright, so the other end of this cord right here has the eyelet that we're going to run right along there. Let me get the light here so you can see. And right underneath. Right there. There you can see it. Fasten to that for the ground. There's a little bit better view of it. And that's uh, 15 millimeter. So here's the ultimate finished product. See it does look pretty clean. Mounted to the ROPS over there. Got it currently hooked up to my hydraulic top link. There's the thumb switch I was telling you about that controls it. And there's the on-off switch after you start the tractor. That, that has to be enabled as well for the thumb switch to be active. So let me give you guys a demo of the finished product here. Uh, it's going to be a little bit loud, so apologize for that, but we'll fire up and you can see it. control This kit's ultimately going to let me do a couple things. Mostly I'm going to be using it for a hydraulic top link for my box blade, grater blade, and whatnot. But I'll also be able to use it to control, especially since it's got the thumb control, for a grapple uh, bucket that we have from everything attachments on the front of the tractor. Now, considering the outlets uh, you know, go to the back, I'm going to end up, have to end up running some pretty long hoses to the front, make them semi-permanent probably with some zip ties and some... Uh, uh, different mounting hardware, but you know for this tractor that was my only option I didn't have an option to add any uh, additional hydraulics to the front of the tractor other than the bucket Lift lower and curl another pro tip for you test it all before you put it back together 
So this project probably took me about four and a half, five hours in total. Um, spanned it over a couple weeks just because that was the only time I had really to work on the thing. Uh, but if you had a solid Saturday, uh, maybe a helper, you could easily get it done in an afternoon. And, I mean, it, in my opinion, if you're going to save seven or eight hundred bucks, it could take as many weeks as you want and it's still worth it. Appreciate you guys stopping by. Hope you liked the video. Hope it was helpful to some of you out there trying to do the same thing. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, please leave them. Please like, subscribe, come back and check out uh, some of the other stuff we got going on. Thanks, guys.